Imagine yourself looking at a photograph. It's of the ocean, a fragment of this beautiful phenomenon. A photo of the ocean, suspended in time. Imagine your arms move around you slowly. From time to time, your feet kick out and balance your body in the water. Imagine yourself floating. The sky is a deep blue above your head. The water around you is cool and refreshing. As you sink deeper, the water around you catches your fall and slows your movement. As you look around, green and yellow kelp lie at your feet. Sea stars line the rocks, red ones the size of your palm. Brittle stars are harder to see in between the rocks, but they stand out like stars in the sky. A big red and blue crab stares up at you from out of the cracks, staying dead still, waiting for its meal. Fish swim past in schools as you float, suspended in this moment of haste, as marine life travels past you as if on a highway in rush hour. A particular fish about the size of your hand swims past. It has seven black stripes along its body. As the sunlight glints off its scales, reds, browns and whites all flash back at you from its sleek, scaled body. It's a banded morwong. You recognise it as being a fish that could be over 100 years old. This fact is intriguing and leaves you with a feeling of awe at this small creature swimming past, unaware of the watchful eyes you have placed on it. You reach out in front of you, your camera ready, and you line up the shot. It's too quick. The banded moong has darted through some kelp. This experience was in Tasmania, and I'll return to this idea later on. Every time I go outside, whether it's on a walk, to the beach, or up into the desert, I feel this connection to the nature surrounding me. I feel happy and safe. I feel content, refreshed, amazed, and slightly afraid of what I'll discover. I feel emotions arise in me that seem to fill me up and make me feel connected. If I had to choose one word that summed up my connection with nature, it would be the word awe. Awe means to have a feeling of reverential respect, mixed with fear and wonder. This, this word fits perfectly when I share why I feel connected to nature. For my Class 12 project, I chose a project that encompassed this connection to nature and my knowledge of the setting I was in to take a photo that showed this. My project started with the idea of capturing nature through photography. As my project progressed, I started to be more drawn to one aspect of nature compared to the rest and felt that I could portray emotions this way through photography. This place was the ocean. I was born in Wyala, a town on the east coast of the Air Peninsula. As a two-year-old, I grew up being able to walk to the beach I played with dead crabs and built sandcastles, as any two-year-old would. As I got older and moved to Adelaide, around the age of six, I received a book from my parents, filled with ocean life. I was hooked. I knew at that moment I wanted to spend every minute underwater, and I knew I wanted to be a marine biologist. Throughout my project journey, I set out on hikes up into the hills and took pictures of dry landscapes and wet landscapes of sand, water, and trees. I kept being drawn back into the ocean. My first photos for this project were taken at Semaphore Beach. The sun was setting, a bright yellow and orange light fading into the sea and birds circling. I was drawn into taking photos of everything I saw. It was the first time I had ever really used a proper DSLR camera. There were so many buttons and settings, and a huge lens. The feeling was strange, as I was used to looking through my phone and just clicking the button. As I picked up the camera and looked through the hole, I remembered back to my research on aperture and exposure. I flicked through the settings on my camera until I felt 
like they were just in the right spot for me to capture the scene before me. The sun was setting fast over the ocean, and the settings I had selected weren't right anymore. I played around some more, capturing the birds soaring above the ocean, and the wind soaping the water to and fro. As I was looking out to sea, I started to think about the life thriving below the surface. I felt like I was still missing something big for my project, and that this was the answer. I wanted to capture this life under the ocean's surface. Through my project, I went to many different places. I spent majority of my time at Port Nalunga in Adelaide. Port Nalunga is a marine protected area. Marine protected areas are like national parks, but underwater. They have no take policies, and because of this, there is an abundance of fish to see. I took most of my underwater photos at Port Nalunga. Another place I went to was the Bluff. This is where I took majority of my above water photos. The Bluff is a rugged piece of coastline that offers a huge range of photography opportunities, such as of waves crashing onto rocks, sunlight hitting the Bluff from all angles, and a deep blue sea contrasting the white sea foam and wet rocks. I really enjoyed experimenting with all the colours and textures of the landscape I was surrounded by. And at the time, I was with a mentor who I learned a great deal from concerning how to frame photos and portray emotions through the photos I was taking. Around the corner from the bluff is Goa. At Goa, I managed to set up a drone and take pictures of the waves rolling into the beach from an angle that is quite special. This angle of the drone from very high up helped to show the vastness of the beach. And when looking at the photo, draws out emotions and feelings of awe at the immensity of the ocean. I used a DJI Mini, which learning how to use this was a new skill, although I found it quite an easy skill to pick up. About halfway through the year, in March, an opportunity arose in Tasmania. It was a marine biology course that introduced students to the temperate reefs of Tasmania, which I thought would be the perfect opportunity to deepen my connection to the ocean and it would also benefit my future. I immediately applied and was lucky enough to receive one of the 12 scholarships offered throughout Australia. The course had 24 spots for students all up. At the time, I was a bit skeptical about going. I had a lot of schoolwork going on and I felt that by taking a whole week off, it would be very challenging for me. It was hard to manage my time effectively, but I managed and definitely felt that I had learnt new skills in time management. Remember back to the start of my speech. I talked about being in an underwater place and a fish swam past me. This place was in Tasmania. The day I landed in Tassie, I was filled with an abundance of emotions. I was very excited, but at the same time, extremely nervous about the people I would meet and what we would do. When I stepped off the plane, I was met by real life marine biologists. I was the second person to arrive and we waited until the rest of the people had flown in from Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. I was shy at first, but soon discovered that everyone had very cool backgrounds. Like a girl I met called Charlie. She was a world champion surfer and 17 years old. We shared stories that blew my mind and I was so intrigued at who these people were. The first night I spent in Hobart was in a hotel room with a girl I had never met in my life. I was very scared, but it turned out to be completely fine and we had a very fun night talking about the exciting things we were about to discover. The week I spent in Tasmania was one of the best weeks of my life. I made new lifelong friends and learnt new skills in discovering how to talk with people I had never met. I learnt so much information about the ocean and about the impacts of climate change on our reef the species living on the reef, and much, much more. I went out snorkelling and walking on rocks, collecting fish, zooplankton, in fauna and intertidal samples. We went snorkelling most days, and when we weren't, we went on small hikes to places like a place called Painted Cliffs, which had ocean on one side, and on the other were cliffs that rose up above our heads, showcasing reds, oranges and yellows. Each new idea and each new thing I learnt 
was unique and led to an understanding I had never thought about before. Through this journey of being in Tasmania, I came across this feeling of being in awe. We travelled to a fairly remote island called Mariah Island during this journey. As the ferry came into the site of the island, I firstly noticed the birds. There were lots of different birds everywhere. Arctic gulls and seagulls lined the jetty we were about to disembark from. I then noticed the white sand that lined the beaches and green trees that rose up around 10 metres from the water's edge. Grass-covered hills were everywhere and colourful sandstone cliffs weathered by the wind and waves. A small dirt track wove up into the trees to historic ruins. In this moment and the moments that followed, I felt in awe at this beautiful landscape. About an hour after arriving, we went for a snorkel. It was the coldest snorkel I have ever done, but one that I will remember. Mariah Island is home to a marine protected area. This means that there is no fishing allowed and it allows species to thrive in their natural habitats and rehabilitate. It was obvious to me when I jumped in that the life around me was thriving. This was the second time in one day I had felt in awe. I felt full of wonder at the world around me. I was slightly scared being in this new world, but mostly just in awe at what I saw. Draft board sharks were swimming past me, stingrays as small as my hand and as big as suitcases, little schools of sea mullet and bright red lobsters hidden between the kelp. I felt truly lucky to experience such a sight with every creature not giving a care I was there and continuing about its day. As the week went on and we were counting the species that lived on Mariah Island, the results started forming patterns and these results and conclusions shocked me. We all know about climate change. The oceans are warming up and being in Tasmania, I got to see this for myself. The warm water from the east coast of Australia is being brought down to the temperate zones of Tasmania along the East Australian Current, which is the current that runs from the east coast of Australia down to New South Wales and back up again. But this current is getting larger as the water is getting warmer. While I was in Tasmania, we got to look at different ways of sampling the ocean. Infrastructure in the ocean has been measuring the water temp for a long time and has shown results that it is warming up. The research we did also proved to us that this was true. Along with warm water that travels down to Tasmania, there are also lots of different species that follow this current. With the current expanding, this means the warm water species are travelling into colder water regions. Through the surveys we did, I discovered that for the first time in history, a warm water fish species was dominating the cold waters of Tasmania. This fact was scary. On a more positive note, through our surveys, we discovered something which I found quite interesting. This discovery was about zooplankton. Zooplankton, a tiny microscopic species living in the ocean. The thing we discovered was that the most abundant species in the area was bioluminescence. Scientifically, it's called Noctiluca scintillians, which I think is a pretty cool name. I had tried for a few hours each day to try and get a picture of it in the water, as it is the most beautiful sparkly creature. But because it is a zooplankton and individually microscopic, I could only manage to get a photo of it under the microscope. Knowledge, facts and answers like these were discovered through all the surveys we did. What I learned while I was in Tasmania was incredible. It not only changed my project in ways that I could never have thought, but it also changed the way I thought about the ocean and my future. While I was in Tassie, one of my lecturers, Dr. Scott Bennett, really influenced me. Scott is a marine scientist with a research focus on marine and climate change ecology. He gave amazing insights into what he does for a job, and I fell in love with the work he did and his passion for what he did in his job. Scott is also an underwater photographer, and I spoke to him about my year 12 project. 
and he gave me quite a lot of useful information on what equipment was really good for underwater photography. He has the same camera as me, a TG6, but he also has a lot of different lenses and attachments, which I do not have. He showed me how to use his equipment, <laughs> but unfortunately, I couldn't take his advice, his advice on board, as I couldn't afford the equipment he had suggested. His advice around framing photos and how to connect knowledge of certain species to help take a photo really stood out to me, and I learnt a great deal about how to photograph kelp, which was his specialty. He taught me a lot, a lot of skills on how to use my camera, which I continue to use and practice. Arriving back in Adelaide, I had a new idea for my project. This idea revolved around connection, knowledge and sharing. I wanted to use my connection and knowledge of the ocean and use photography to share this. For example, I felt connected to the ocean through, its through this feeling of awe at its wonders. I also knew about the problems it faced. I wanted to share this wonder, awe and knowledge through a photograph so I could provoke these feelings in others. The only problem was that underwater photography was new to me. I set about using skills I had already had from the months before and applied them to the underwater world. A few days after I was back, I jumped straight back into the water and straight away recognised and could name majority of the flora and fauna I saw from what I had learnt in Tassie. I had a few challenges through my project. The most challenging thing I came across was having the time to do things. Having a project that was mostly focused on being underwater meant that I had to find days that were completely free. Days had to be free because I needed to go scuba or snorkel at low tide, as this was when the water was less wild and sand was more settled. I needed about 40 minutes to travel there, get my gear on, then snorkel or scuba, take photos, then dry off and travel home. As you can see, it was a busy day. This challenge made it difficult for me, especially in the colder months, as getting in the water was freezing and I didn't really feel that motivated to take photos when it was cold. What helped me was when I did just jump into the water and a sense of calm came over me as I looked around at the life around me. This motivated me to keep going even when it was so cold I couldn't feel my fingers. The photographs I took reminded me of this calmness and pushed me to keep going. When I look at a photograph, I see there's a story behind it, and I feel intrigued to stare at it all day, taking every aspect in. I wanted to discover how I could use photography as a way to share the story of the ocean to others. I wanted to share the emotions I feel and the knowledge I have of the ocean through photographs for other people to connect to. For me, photography before this project was a completely new skill I had never learnt. I had taken millions of photos on my phone, but had never really thought about the story behind a photo, or the way the camera was placed, or how the settings would be adjusted. I learnt the skills and knowledge about how a camera works, mostly from trial and error. I took around 10,000 photos, which helped me keep trying and testing each and every aspect of the photo. While I did mostly teach the skills to myself, I was also assisted by various photographers. One of them was called Scott. He gave me a piece of advice that helped me take better photos as a whole and helped me understand the process in which to go through. His advice was to know your subject. Once you know your subject, your photo becomes more than just a photo. It tells a story. This advice stuck with me and I went out wanting to create photos that not only told a story, but allowed others to feel a similar way to how I did when I took the photo. Photography was a way to share what I know about the ocean to others. There is a huge bank of knowledge that I didn't even touch on, and through my project, I felt I gained so much information, when really, I only scraped the surface. The information I did gain was something I wanted to share with others, and I felt photography was a way to show how the underwater world connects, thrives and struggles. I felt that showing this was important because I think that everyone should have the feeling of awe and be aware of the ocean's processes. This project was massive for me. Throughout the year, I discovered a deeper connection to the ocean through learning new skills, discovering new knowledge 
and experiencing things that I never thought I would experience this year. I learnt the basics of underwater photography and fell in love with the idea of documenting knowledge and emotions this way. I discovered that a pathway in marine biology is a must. I want to learn more about the ocean and its processes. Through learning and connecting, I can continue to share my passion with others so they too will have the benefit of being connected to something so special, something that gives us this feeling of awe. I hope that into the future, awe is sought out and fulfilled daily in everyone's lives. Whether it's received from the ocean, above it or below it, or from something else in your life that gives you the same feeling of awe. Maybe it's flying, taking a walk, being in a forest, planting a tree, or driving a car. Awe makes us calmer, more creative, and fills us with wonder. Respect the thing that gives you this feeling of awe, as it is such an important part of being alive. Thank you. Congratulations for a wonderful Zoe speech and a beautiful first speech for this year's Class 12. You've painted a really wonderful, broad as well as detailed picture of the ocean and I've been scuba diving myself because I study biology, so I, I, you, you just reflected the beauty of the ocean so beautifully. What is your next step, you think, to go towards your dream, working with the ocean and for the ocean? Um, well, I have applied to a marine biology course in Tasmania, which I have been accepted into. So I guess that is the next step. Yeah. Up the back. Hi Zoe, congratulations on um, deep diving in many temperatures of water. That in itself is a challenge. Um, I wanted to ask you something quite ecological. In this moment of massive change, both sociological and environmentally, how do you think we're going to go, or how do you think the ideas of adaptability will get us through? Um, good question. Um, <laughs> I think that there's, um, uh, hello, my microphone's not working. Oh, um, I think there's a lot of uh, scientists out there who are doing a lot of different things to help the ocean and yeah, I think eventually it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to answer that one. Yeah, yep, over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the question was, what can I hear when I'm underwater? Um, I actually thought it would be silent when I went underwater, but it's actually quite loud. Um, there's lots of corals that are eating, and you can hear all that noise popping and fish eating, and yeah, it's very loud. It's, yeah, if you get the opportunity to go scuba diving, take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Oh. Um, out of all the sites I saw, what was my favourite? It's probably. Oh, I don't know. It's all pretty cool. <laughs> um, I love sharks, so seeing the draft board sharks were pretty amazing. Got pretty excited by them, yeah. Yep. Wait for the microphone, yeah. What do you th um, what do you think an individual could do to help the ocean more in, that, in this current day? Um. Well, <laughs> um, I think just be aware of what's going on and 
just take that into consideration, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, I think, a pretty personal question. You have to ask yourself that, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hi, testing, all right. Um, um, I was just wondering how has like photography changed the way you physically view the world, if that makes any sense? Sorry? Um, how does like dabbling in photography change the way you view the world? Um, I think it definitely makes me respect it a bit more. Um, having the time to just wait for that one fish to swim past or that one sunset, um, I think it really yeah, makes you respect everything around you, yeah. So that was wonderful, thank you. You speak about those moments of awe that really move you and connect you to the world. How do you go when you have a day or a week where you don't get in the ocean and you don't get to um, get out in nature for that? Or do you find it kind of hard to get through just a regular day or do you find different ways of experiencing that in your day? Um, I like to look at my photographs to try and get that sense again. It's not the same as actually being underwater, but... Yeah, if I can't get there one week or something like that, it helps just to like look at back at photos I've taken or videos I've taken. Yeah. Any other questions? Eleanor? Um, Zoe, I'm interested by your idea of expressing emotion through photography. And I'm wondering, was there something you were trying to capture or was it more you noticed you were having the feeling and wondered if others could experience it too? Do you know what I mean? So was it intentional or was it something that happened? Um, I think sometimes when I took a photo, I was feeling something and I wanted to capture it at that point in time because I wanted others to feel the same way. And then other times... It wasn't until afterwards that I realised that there was something else connected to the photo and that I still wanted people to feel that connection to that certain photo. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Zoe? Who's talking? Um, I just wanted to say I really appreciated that picture yeah. you put, that aerial one from your drone. It looked yeah. really good. Uh, just wanted to ask you, when you go scuba diving, what species of fish do you like watching when you go under the water? Oh, um, I really like watching magpie perch. They're quite interesting. Um, they like to feed on all the sand and then they spit it out and then they eat it again. And they don't really run away from you either, they just sit there. So. Yeah, they're quite interesting. Yeah. Sophie. I'll just go. Oh. Congratulations, Zoe. Thanks. So proud of you, and that was a sensational talk. I was wondering how this idea of wonder or awe has benefited your life in other ways. Um, oh, that's a deep question. <laughs> um, I think recognising that I was feeling those things actually helped me throughout the year as well because, it, yeah, um, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. That was really good, Zoe. Um, how have you presented your photographs or how are you planning on showing them to the world? So I have created a book. It's up in the foyer if you want to go look at it. Yeah, it's got lots of photographs in it. 
Um, yeah, that was my artifact for my project. Okay, um, I have a few thank yous to give. Firstly, I would, thank, I would like to thank my parents and my brothers who were always there for me when I needed them and were very helpful throughout the entire year. A special thank you to all my grandparents who supported me in many ways, such as buying me a photography class, an underwater camera, and supported me the whole way through. I would like to thank Aaron, our class guardian, who was the person who sent me the information about the uni course in Tasmania. Without it, my project would be completely different, and I'm very glad it went, the day, went in the direction it did. I would like to thank my supervisors, Rose and Grace, for team meetings that provided yummy food and directional chats about project. And to Eleanor, Eleanor, my jo mentor John, <laughs> and other mentors I had along the way for all the support and teachings throughout the year. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>